What's going on, everyone? So the Los Angeles Lakers took an absolute beating yesterday, no doubt about it. And they are officially eliminated from the Summer League playoffs, and it just, it wasn't good, right? Everyone looked terrible, everyone looked poor, and, you know, it's unfortunate that that's how the Lakers' Summer League season went out, right? You lost two, you won your first two games, looked great, all this hype, all this excitement, guys are all clicking, it's like, man, look at, you know, look at Hodge, look at Shafino, look at Lewis, you know, look at Castleton, like, these guys are killing it, and then you end up losing your last two games, and it's just poor performances from most, right, you did, although in that Celtics game, like, Hodge had a really good game, he had, like, 22 points, hit six threes, um, you had, you know, Shafino, he had, like, 15 and eight or something like that, right, you had your good and your bad, and you had your moments, and, of course, we all wanted, we all were disappointed, but we all want to to go out with that fire, right? Have a chance to maybe win Summer League. But it's not what it's about. And it is crazy to me how much Lakers Nation, not the YouTube channel, Lakers Nation in general, like all, all of the fans and stuff, are just losing their minds over Summer League. It's crazy to me. It is Summer League. These are rookies. These are guys that are coming in and are raw and are just out there playing, right? Like, you're going to have good, you're going to have bad. I mean, even Kobe Bryant had his bl- uh, blemishes and th- was airballing shots and stuff like that. People were calling him a bust. And look what happened. Like, you cannot judge players, rookies, on Summer League. There are guys that have won Summer League MVP and never did anything in the league. There are guys that have put up, you know, 25 a game in Summer League and just absolutely dominated Summer League and looked like the next coming and did nothing in the in the NBA. It happens. You cannot judge players on Summer League. Summer League is about seeing your prospects, allowing them to get reps, allowing to see... It's more about like the undrafted guys and the other guys than it is the the draft picks. That's why most teams end up sitting out their draft picks or have them play a couple games and then sit them out because it's about the other guys. It's about the undrafted guys. It's about the guys that very likely aren't going to make the roster. What guys do we want on a two ways or anybody that actually has potential to make the roster? We got that extra spot. Like that's what it's about. It's about opportunity for these guys to show good goods and bads and organizations know and understand that like hey these guys are going to have good moments and good and bad moments but how do the good moments look compared to the bad moments right do the ba- good moments outshine the bad moments and the Lakers had multiple guys like Shafino was very good during the course of summer league he had his bad moments, absolutely. But overall, he was really good. He showed you everything that you wanted to see from Shafino. He showed you he's a sizable guard that can play both guard positions. His shot actually started to come around, and he was hitting the three ball a lot more effect- efficiently. Um, but he showed that he's a big, sizable guard that can go point to point, can get out in transition, push the pace, be physical, strong on both the defensive side and the offensive side, finish through contact, that is what you want to see, right? Like, that's what you want to see. You want to see, like, what are the goods and the intangibles about this player that we drafted? And you saw that with these guys. You know, Hodge, two-way guy, undrafted. He's not supposed to be putting up 22-point games on 45% from three and 50% from the field. He went undrafted. He's a guy that was an afterthought. But he did. He had, you know, an 18-point game, a 22-point game. You know, in the Celtics loss, he put up 22 points with 6 of 13 from 3, shot 55% from the field overall, was playing some solid defense, playing both sides of the ball, looks like the second coming of KCP. What more could you want? Like, seriously, what more could you want from Hodge? All of these guys are raw they're all, they all need to be developed. Like, even LeBron, when he came in the league, was raw and needed to take time to develop, right? He, he didn't take the, 
the Cleveland Cavaliers to the NBA Finals and win a championship in year one? No. I mean, he did it in year three, but still. You know, he, he, it took him three years. And that's LeBron James, arguably the greatest player ever. Right? Kobe took a couple years to get in a rhythm. Austin Reeves, right? As high as everyone's on Austin Reeves, right? Like, it, he took major strides. Look at Max Christie. Max Christie's probably the best example. Max Christie, last summer league, had moments where he was awful and looked unplayable. He was great defensively. He had elite level defense for a rookie coming in. But his shot was kind of janky, although he had nice stroke. Like, I have videos where I'm literally defending him and talking about him. And I'm like, yeah, he, he was terrible, but look, these are the goods. And I saw all kinds of people that were like, oh, like, what are you talking about? You don't know what you're talking about. This guy is a bust. The Lakers wasted a bit. And now look, now every, all those same people are like, Max Christie's the next Kobe Bryant. Like, because he was developed and... He understood, and then you saw him in this year's Summer League, and the guy was arguably the best player in the entire Summer League. And that's not an exaggeration. Dude, the guy averaged like 22 points on almost 60% from three and 55% from the field, or 56% from the field. Like, that that's really good. He was putting up numbers on crazy efficiency. Like, that is what we want to see. You can't judge these guys on a summer league game or even an entire summer league, right? Like, there are plenty of guys that had real success in the regular season that were atrocious in summer league. I mean, go watch guys like Giannis playing in summer league. Go watch Giannis' first couple years. <laughs> like, the dude was... It was so raw and just, like, people thought, like, that was a waste of a pick for Milwaukee and all kinds of stuff, Right? There, I mean, there were experts saying, like, uh, who was it, Shane Larkin? Literally, that was like, like they, they, you know, Milwaukee is going to regret not drafting Shane Larkin. Why did they waste a pick on Giannis? He looks bad. Like, and now look, now Giannis is the best player in the league, or arguably the best player in the league. Like, we saw positives from the guys we needed to see positives from. Right? Like I said, Shafino, you got to see why the Lakers drafted him. Sizable combo guard that can play defense, that can handle the ball, make plays for others, get to the basket, finish through contact. Great. You saw why guys like Colin Castleton and Hodge both got two-way contracts, right? Because they were really good. They were really good in workouts. The Lakers brought both of them back twice for workouts and were like, these are the guys we want. Both guys go undrafted. Castleton went undrafted deliberately because he wanted to go Lakers, took the Austin Reeves route, same agent. But again, like I said with Hodge, like Castleton, same thing. Castleton was out there looking like the second coming of Marcus Saul. I mean, the passes and playmaking that he did, and even in the loss, I mean, he still shot 50%, right? I mean, he still, for as bad as people said he looked, in the last game, he still shot 50% from the field, still gave you like six or seven rebounds or whatever, right? Like, Castleton showed you the ability to defend at the rim, make plays for others. You can literally run your offense through this guy and hit the mid-range, knock down the three ball occasionally, but that's definitely raw. He needs to work on that. But you got to see all the bright spots. You got to see all the things that you wanted to, that you were wanted to see and you were hoping for with him. He stood out arguably more than anybody outside of like Max Christie. Dude, the guy was a highlight reel. An absolute highlight reel. The dude, I mean, even in the, the Memphis series, right? He had 11 points, 8 rebounds, 1 assist, and 1 foul, and 25 minutes of play, and shot 5 of 10 from the field. And people were saying he's trash. He almost gave you a double-double shooting 50% from the field, and it, it wasn't just him. It, like, he was the second-best player that game. The best player was Figueroa, right? Like, Figueroa was the other guy that had a really nice game. He had 15 points of 7 to 10, but Figueroa, I don't see him. I see him just being a G League guy, All right? He didn't show you enough. But you have you have your two players and Lewis and Shafino who 
showed you promise. And then you have Hodge and Castleton, two guys that made a real argument for that 15th spot on the Lakers roster. How can you look at the Lakers Summer League and not take anything but success away? I, I, that doesn't make any sense to me. That's the goal of Summer League. Summer League is just for entertainment and fans and for the NBA to make money outside of the NBA during the offseason. Right? Like, it's not it's not to be taken in credit. Like it's not they're not playing for the NBA championship here. They're playing for a silly Summer League title and to just show promise and maybe get a job somewhere. It's a tryout <laughs> more than it is anything else. It's what it is. It's a tryout. And so I just see so many people, like it's crazy the amount of people that are just going in on the Lakers and how they're so bad and blah, blah, blah. And it's like you saw great promise from your two draft picks. Both of them looked really good. Lewis looks like a young Mikel Bridges out there. The dude's bigger. He's hyper-athletic. The dude is just looks massive. He can legitimately shoot the three ball, right? He showed his ability to shoot the three ball efficiently. He wasn't last game, but again, nobody was. But over the course of Summer League, he was. The the only real argument, or, 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 right, not argument, but like disappointment in Lewis was his lack of, or at least in my opinion, was his lack of aggressiveness, right? He didn't get a, as much time playing time as I thought he would, which is interesting, but that probably my guess is the Lakers looked at it and were like, we already gave him a four year deal. Like we got what we wanted. We like, we don't need to see him heavily. Like, let's look at the other guys that we may bring in or bring on a two way or something like that. Right. The other, he, they wanted the other guys to get highlighted, right? That that's kind of what, or at least my takeaway is from that. But even in the times he played, I wish he was a little more aggressive. Like even last game, he had two off the top of my head, like two wide open shots and just looked away and passed it up rather than taking those shots. And I get he was shooting horrible that game, but still take the shots, right? Just shoot, get the things up, right? You're wide open, shoot the ball. But you saw real promise from Shafino and Lewis. Shafino legitimately, at worst, looks like a, a Brogdon, you know, a sizable guard that can handle the ball, make plays for others. Like, can be a legit 3 and D at the point guard position. And Lewis looks like a legit 3 and D style player. At worst, a reserve guy. A backup guy. Like, that's that's fine. You're talking about the 40th and 17th pick. They're not supposed to be superstars. They're supposed to be bench guys. Guys off the bench that make some type of contribution. And they looked like guys that absolutely could do that. And then on top of those two, you also got two undrafted guys that were killing it, that absolutely stood out and looked like they were absolutely balling. Like, name me another two undrafted guys that just far and away stood out more than Castleton and Hodge. Oh, wait. I'm not saying there weren't other undrafted guys that had good summer leagues. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, like, name me two that were just like, these two had just way better summer leagues than than Hodge. They're not. There wasn't. They had really good summer leagues. They really stood out. And there are two-way guys. And both of them you can make an argument for to make the roster. And they one of them probably will. If the Lakers can't find another center, they both might. Which I wouldn't be against. And I don't think anyone would be against. Right, Colin Castleton showed a lot of promise. Hodge showed a lot of promise. They showed like they're two guys that you can put in. Not, I'm not saying they're gonna they would get 30 minutes or anything like that. But they're two guys that you could legit put in for 10 minutes a game and trust that they're not gonna mess it up. Like, what more could you ask for from two undrafted guys? And then our two draft picks, like, same thing. You could throw them in for 15 minutes and trust that they're not going to mess it up. That doesn't mean they're not going to have bad games or bad moments or stuff, but overall, right? If you gave all four of those guys 15 minutes a game over all 82 games, I guarantee you would walk away with like, oh man, they, they did really well. 
I think they would hold their own more than they would otherwise. That is all you could ask for from rookies on a summer league deal. None of these guys are supposed to be the franchise cornerstone. Like, none of these guys are the next Kobe Bryant. They're not supposed to be. We didn't get, you know, the number one or two draft pick. Like, we didn't get the Scoot Hendersons or the Victor Wembanyamas or the Thompson Twins or anything like that. We got the later draft picks where we're trying to find that that Draymond Green, you know, that that Kawhi Leonard of the world, whatever. You know, like those guys, that, that Jokic. You know, those high, late draft picks that turned out to be something great. And all of those, none of those guys looked great. You know, like, they all took time. Everybody takes time to develop. So we need to, we need to take a breath, understand what it is, and be excited and thankful for what we saw from our young talent. I am, but as always, pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Are you? Are you not? How do you feel? Love